this example, I want to talk about how to use a sampling distribution for means. How is this? How, how can this be used? One of my previous examples talked about using sampling distributions for proportions. So for means, it's <clears throat> very similar, but just a little bit different. Um, Let's go ahead and look at the example that I want to want to use, and then we'll go through the process and the things that you have to look at before you actually start doing some of the math. It says at birth, babies average 7.8 pounds with a standard deviation of 2.1 pounds. Now I want to make a note that this these are parameters. Okay, this is supposed to be true for the population of all babies: 7.8 pounds and 2.1 pounds. Now, it goes on to say that we want to collect a random sample. So, a random sample of 34 babies born to mothers living near a large factory that may be polluting the air and water shows a mean birth weight of only 7.2 pounds. Is that unusually low? So, what I have here, this 7.2 pounds comes from a sample, and the sample size is 34, 34 babies. So, we are going to use a sampling distribution to see if if um, 7.2 pounds is unusual for a random sample of 34 babies. Well, there's something that we need to make note of before we, we move on to these assumptions and conditions down here. And that is the fact that there are a couple of truths or properties that um, we need to look at for uh, sampling distributions. In order to define a sampling distribution or the, a model for a sampling distribution, we need a mean and a standard deviation. Okay, so a sampling distribution takes on a normal model, and since this is a sampling distribution for means, I need a mean and a standard deviation for my sampling distribution. Well, there are two truths. Here's one of them. The mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the population mean. So whatever the parameter for the population mean is, <clears throat> the sampling distribution ha is going to have a mean that is equal to it. Now the second thing that we need to define a normal model is a standard deviation. And there is a formula for finding the standard deviation of a sampling dif distribution for means, and that's right here. The standard deviation of a sampling distribution for means is given by this formula right here the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Now these other two um, symbols that we ha have here, these are two different notations for the standard deviation of a sampling distribution. This is a notation for the mean of a sampling distribution for means. This is a symbol for the standard deviation of a sampling distribution for means. You could also use subscripts with sigma, but the formula is this, sigma over the square root of n. So if I go back <clears throat> to my original problem, if all of my assumptions and conditions check out, then I know that I am going to end up using a normal model where the mean is 7.8 and the standard deviation is equal to 2.1 divided by the square root of my sample size, which is 34. So that's what I'm shooting for. That's, that's what I want to use, but I have to check my assumptions and conditions first. So let's look at our four assumptions and conditions. The first one that we want to check is the randomization condition. And the reason the randomization condition is important is because either we have collected a random sample and that random sample represents the population, or we just have, know that we have a sample that represents the population. So this condition checks out because the 34 babies were randomly sampled. I then need to check my independence assumption, and that says this. Is it reasonable to think that those 34 babies have weights that are independent of each other? And sure it is, okay? These, these babies don't have any association between each other, so it's, it's reasonable to think that they are. I also would need to check the 10% condition. And that says that, <clears throat> that my sample size is less than 10% of the population. Well, as long as there are, more than th there are more than 340 babies that were born under these conditions, 
then 34 babies would represent less than 10% of all of those babies. And we are going to assume that this is true. So this is actually an assumption, because we can't know for sure if this condition has been met, so we're going to assume that it is true. And then finally, we want to check the large enough condition. And that states this, that we will assume that 34 babies is a large enough sample. Um, <clears throat> at this point in time, uh, I'm not going to go into uh, more details on this large enough condition. I've got a few, uh, we've got a few more chapters to get to in my, the classes that I teach before we get to this particular um, condition in more depth. But when we get there, we'll, we'll cover it a little bit more in depth. So now I am going to use a normal model. Okay, let me go ahead and copy this here. I'll just rewrite it down at the bottom. <clears throat> I'm going to say this, the model for my sampling distribution of X bar is going to look like this. It's normal with a mean of 7.8 and a standard deviation of 2.1 divided by the square root of 34. And it just so happens that 2.1 divided by the square root of 34 is about 0.36 pounds. Well, now that I've defined my normal model, I can start to uh, use it in, and find probabilities using z-scores. Well, the original question says, would a random sample of 34 babies born to mothers living near a large factory that might be polluting the air and the water shows a mean birth weight of only 7.2 pounds. So 7.2 becomes the X bar that I'm going to use for my Z score. And I want to know, is that unusually low? Now, another thing to keep in mind is if something is unusual, that means that it is less than 5%. Okay. Another way you could look at it is, is it more than two standard deviations away from the mean? But let's go ahead and draw a picture of what I've got here. So I'll draw a normal curve. And I know that the mean in the center is 7.8. That is also a z-score of 0. So let's find the z-score for 7.2, which is the x-bar that I have. So 7.2 minus 7.8 all over the standard deviation of my model, which is 0.36. <clears throat> when I do the math here, 7.2 minus 7.8 over 0.36 gives me negative 1.67. So somewhere over here is negative a z-score of negative 1.6, oops, 6.7, not 7.6, let me correct that. Negative 1.67 is right here. And I'm going to find the area that is below it. Because I don't know if it's unusually high or unusually low, but since 7.2 is below the population mean, I'm going to go ahead and find how unusually low is it to have 34 babies that has a mean weight that is less than 7.2. That's when I can jump to my calculator and use normal CDF, since I'm using a normal model. So here we go. I'm going to hit second VARS. I'm going to use number two, normal CDF. And I want to go from my left-hand boundary to my right-hand boundary. The left-hand boundary is 99. Now, you could use larger numbers than this, um, relatively larger numbers than this, but negative 99 is usually a number that's, that's it's definitely a number that's good enough for my left-hand boundary. And my right-hand boundary is negative 1.67. So here we go, negative 1.67. And when I hit Enter, <clears throat> I find that the area that is the, the area under the curve is 0 0.047. So I could say this. So I'm going to go ahead and type this in so that it looks a little bit nicer. <clears throat> and I could probably say something along these lines. The probability that a sample of 34 babies will have a mean weight less than 7.2 pounds is about 
0.75%. Now, what did we say earlier? We said that any probability that's less than 5% is considered unusual. So this right here tells me that it is considered unusual. So let's go ahead and finish this off because the question said, is it unusual, you know, is this uh, an unusual mean? So therefore, <clears throat> well, let, me, let me say it like this. Since the probability is less than 5%, we would consider this we would consider this average to be unusual and that's really all i need to say um, another thing that you could look at is how many standard deviations away um, but this is only 1.67 standard deviations away from the mean. And usually we say if it's more than two standard deviations away from the mean, that's considered unusual. But checking the probability is, is another important thing to check. Because there's two ways you can check to see if something is unusual. If it's more than two standard deviations away from the mean, that's considered unusual. Or if the probability of something happening is less than 5%, that's also considered unusual. So in this case, I might not be... Too, more than two standard deviations away, but the probability of this happening is definitely less than 5%. So I would consider this unusual. So this is just an example of how you can use a sampling distribution for means, um, and I hope that it was helpful. Have fun in your stats class.